Hello, Bible Baptist Church. As you can see, we are on location, continuing our I Am series. You know, being that it's the day before Good Friday, you could be thinking that we might be talking about, as Isaiah put it, that Jesus Christ is the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And that just like in Passover, He was the spotless Lamb that would be sacrificed so that our sins would be atoned for and we could pass through death and sin. But that's not why we're here today. We're here because Jesus Christ claimed to be the Good Shepherd. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 10, so I'm going to turn on my phone, my Bible here, and uh, I'm going to just kind of work through this passage and read through this passage with you. And, and if you remember, in John chapter 9, there was this argument that he was having with the Pharisees because he healed the blind man. And they were saying that he shouldn't have healed the blind man, that he, it was the Sabbath day and he, and he shouldn't have been involved in that. And Jesus wanted them to know, you know what? You're not a good shepherd of the flock that God's given you as spiritual leaders. You're a poor shepherd because you care about yourselves more than you care about the sheep. As a matter of fact, he was letting them know that although you want authority over these people that you're supposed to care for, you don't love them. And he said, I, I am the good shepherd. I'm the shepherd that loves his sheep. And so we have some awesome sheep here today. And uh, as we consider these sheep, Jesus is saying, I, I am a shepherd and I, and I will lead these sheep. I will protect these sheep. I will care for these sheep. I will provide for these sheep. You know, sheep cannot protect themselves. They're, they're a docile, pacifist creature. As a matter of fact, they are so not scary that when your child has trouble getting to sleep at night, you say, count sheep, because there could be nothing more innocuous or less scary than a sheep. A sheep needs a shepherd. A sheep needs direction. As a matter of fact, a sheep will also, often listen to the call of its shepherd because their, their eyes will get full of wool and they can't see very good. And so God gave them excellent hearing and they listen to the cadence of a true shepherd and they know the difference between a false shepherd and a true shepherd. And Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd and my sheep, they know me and they will follow me. And if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this metaphor makes sense. You've been impacted by the I am that is a good shepherd. Let's read together. He says, truly, truly. In other words, listen up, listen up. I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. He's saying, listen, I've been given the responsibility of being the good shepherd by God. You have failed in your responsibility before God to be good shepherds. And verse 3 says, To him, the gatekeeper, in other words, God, the sheep hear his voice when he calls his own, and the sheep, he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. Isn't it a beautiful thing that God knows us by name? He called us by name. You think about it, at some point in time, you might have been at a camp and, and, and God called your name and you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You might have been sitting in the auditorium after a message. You might have been with your mom or your dad and you just felt this, this compulsion to say, I, I want to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. You had your name called and you heard it and you followed the Lord after that time. And, and it's so precious to know that God knows us. He's aware of us. He knows our markings. He, he can identify us and we can identify him as our shepherd. He also says that when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him. And you can see that the sheep have fleed me because I'm not their shepherd. They're like, I'm out of here. This guy looks a little scary. But a good shepherd, they'll stay close to. They'll want to follow. They'll want to be, be near. And, and they can tell the difference between a stranger and the good shepherd. Verse 7, it says, So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. 
Now, what he's referring to is as another I am statement, by the way, is he's saying, listen, I am the door. And, and here we have a nice sturdy gate. But in the first century, <laughs> Eastern shepherds, what they would do is they would, they would build a, a pen and that pen would be made out of brush and that pen would be made out of stone. But they would leave a doorway open and the shepherd himself would be the door. And so a shepherd would lay down at the opening of the pen and he did it for two reasons. He did it for reason number one, as I read, so that thieves and robbers and wolves would not come over and get the sheep. So he did it as a, as a sense of protection to make sure that, that bad things didn't come in. And he also laid down as the gate to make sure that, that his sheep that were so precious to him that those sheep would not, would not sneak out of the pen. And, and have you ever heard the phrase, over my dead body? Well, that's literally from the shepherd and this idea that a sheep would have to cross over him or that a thief would have to cross over him. And isn't it great to know that we have a good shepherd and that good shepherd promises us, the sheep of God's fold, eternal security. That, that, that He will make sure that we will not be snatched away. That He will make sure that we will not wander away. But His grace will always chase us back to the fold. And we will once again, even, even when we rebel, even when we walk away, His voice will call us back to Himself. Why? Because He's the Good Shepherd and He's the door. And we, He doesn't lose us. He said, Father, I won't lose one of them. I've found every single one of them. So we, we have a good shepherd that is our gate, our door. And, and then he says in verse 7, So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door, the sheep, all who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. And I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. Did you get that? He, he is, he's not saying that life with the shepherd is all rainbows and gun drops and green pastures. He's saying, listen, there's some dry places. There's some dangerous places. And we have a thief. You know, the knowledge of the fact that God tells us there is a thief that wants to destroy us. There's a thief that wants to lie to us. There's a, there's a, a thief that wants to rob from us. Should, should concern all of us. And I'm wondering, even in this COVID-19 season, if, if we should not be more aware of the fact that, that we are just sheep and we are in grave danger of the thief, and that we should be in God's Word, that, that we should be in accountability, that we should be careful because we can tend in time of anxiety, in time of worry, to, to wander away from our shepherd to wander into dark places in our mind, to wander into vices that, that we've been saved from. And, and so I'm just challenging you, congregation, to, to, to follow and stay close to the Good Shepherd, knowing that a thief will come during this time. We have a Good Shepherd, and His, his, his uh, purpose statement is nothing like the thief's. He wants to give us life. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life is the goal of the Good Shepherd. He wants to lead us to green pastures. He wants surely goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives and to have us eternally in heaven with Him. The goal of the Good Shepherd is to lead us well, to love us, to care for us, to make sure that we're protected, to make sure that we're guided, and, and not just to protect us from evil, but we, we have a boring or unfulfilling life, but a life of true joy, a life of true purpose, a life of eternal um, ecstasy that we can't even imagine after we leave this earth. We have a good shepherd that is protecting us and leading us to that place. He says that I'm the good shepherd and a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees a wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and he flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. You see, Jesus Christ is a good shepherd. Jesus Christ laid down his life for his sheep and he destroyed the wolf of death. Amen? He, he destroyed the, the wolf of sin. 
because he's a good shepherd. And how did he do that? He was willing to lay down his life for his sheep. A hired hand, he says, someone that, that these are not his sheep, but, but he's just doing it for a couple bucks. He's just watching Bob's sheep for a while. That person, his life is more valuable to him than the sheep. But our Savior, a good shepherd, his life was willing to be spent so that he could save the sheep from the wolves and from danger. And so we are all in our sins, the wolf of our sin, but Jesus laid down his life to spare it. And a little later, he says that he, no one took my life, but I willingly laid it down. I, he said, I have the authority to lay down my life. I have as God, as God, I am God man, and I will lay down my life. No one took it. Don't think the Roman soldiers killed Christ. Don't, don't think it was because Pontius Pilate made a, couldn't make a decision that Christ got put on the cross. He gave his own life as the good shepherd. He was willing to go to the cross. I got an amen. And not only did he give his own life on the cross, but he also says this, I have the authority to raise it back up again. In a couple Sundays, we're going to be celebrating Resurrection Sunday. And, and I have been to many, many memorials. And at these memorials, you'll walk through and you will see tombstones of brave men. And they, they are, some of them, buried there. The remains are there. And you say, boy, this person had the authority to give his life for his country. For, for us. So that we could have liberty. But I will tell you this, none of them had the authority to take it back up. And Jesus Christ is saying, listen, there is a good shepherd. There is a great I am. And this good shepherd not only was willing to lay down his life for his flock, but he has the authority and the power to raise it back up again. So today I can still be shepherded by the good shepherd because he is alive and he is my advocate and your advocate sitting at the right hand of the Father as our protector, as our guide, as our good shepherd. I pray that you know him in that beautiful metaphor as your good shepherd. And I pray that as we go into this Easter season, we praise the Lord that we have a good shepherd that was willing and get, had the authority to lay down his life for his sheep. And that he also had the authority to raise it back up again and sit at the right hand of the Father today. Praise the Lord, the good shepherd. <laughs>